Hey everybody, welcome back to the ECG channel. My name is Reed and today's daily ECG. Now don't forget to download the PDF that's in the description and like and subscribe if you do. Let's jump into it. So the first thing I like to do is look at the forest and the trees of the forest are my QRSs. And so you'll notice here that we've got a wide complex QRS that is occurring quite regularly. If we kind of tack along here, there's maybe a couple beats that occur a little bit irregularly, but generally it's a pretty regular QRS here. And I would say this is a very rapid rate. We can see that our, if I land here to here, that would be somewhere between maybe 250 beats per minute. That's just on the eyeball. What I could do is you can actually count the amount of little boxes. So that would be seven little boxes. And the way that you would do the math for the rate with seven little boxes is you would do 1500 divided by seven. 1500 divided by seven. So that rate would be maybe 220 beats per minute. So we've got a tachycardia and we would call this a wide complex tachycardia. So we have a wide complex tachycardia. I don't see those nice sharp QRSs that we like to see in our Q, in our in our um, normal AV node conduction. So we have a wide complex tachycardia at 220 beats per minute. And so what's on the differential on this type of tachycardia? We've got ventricular tachycardia. We've got SVT with aberrancy. And so let's try to figure out what is this. And so we, what we want to do is we want to exclude, really, is this ventricular tachycardia? That's the scariest rhythm. And so we look at the axis of the QRS, and the first thing I notice is that my QRS is upright in AVR. And upright in AVR means that my QRS axis is occurring towards AVR. And that is a really big indicator that this is coming from somewhere deep within the ventricles. And that wouldn't happen with SVT with aberrancy. That would not be the case. And my axis wouldn't be towards AVR. Something else that we can do to help determine, you know, is this SVT with aberrancy is I look at the QRS morphology and I know that aberrant conduction through, through uh, the AV node would be like a right bundle branch block or a left bundle branch block. And so I look at my lateral leads and maybe V6, V5, 1 in AVL and I don't see things that look like left bundle branch block criteria. And I look through V1 and V2 and I don't see anything that looks like right bundle branch block. So I do not see another kind of X against SVT with aberrancy. I don't see any uh, QRS morphology that closely resembles a right bundle or a left bundle branch. So that's points away from SVT with aberrancy. And so the one thing that I want you to note on this EKG that's really going to help you determine that this is ventricular tachycardia is something called AV dissociation. And AV dissociation, what that means is that the atrial rate, the atrial rate is less than the ventricular rate. And so how can you figure that out? Well, that means that we will not have a P wave for every QRS. We will have more QRSs per P waves. And so what you can do in order to help figure that out is look down here and lead two, right? We see all these wide complex QRSs that are marching through, like we said. But what I want you to notice is let's start noticing these T waves, right? You see these nice little smooth waves. And then all of a sudden you'll see these little bites that are taken out of them. You'll see maybe every three or four beats or every two beats, you'll see these little chunks taken out. And those little chunks, those are actually the evidence that we need for AV dissociation. Those are retrograde or anterograde P waves that are occurring at a rate less than that of our QRSs. And so that is how we would determine that we have AV dissociation. And so you can see AV dissociation here in AVF, and it correlates well with what we just showed in lead two. Right, you see those chunks that are being taken out. Those chunks are not everywhere. You see, it's not there. It's not there. So those chunks are really showing us the atrial activity 
and notice that those chunks are occurring at a rate less than that of the ventricles. And so why would that happen? Well, in somebody who's got ventricular tachycardia, we've got some area in the ventricles, especially a monomorphic like this, the QRSs are the same every time, you've got depolarization that is occurring through the ventricles rapidly. This AV node is not going to be able to conduct that signal retrograde every single time. So what you're going to notice is that you'll have more ventricular wide complex QRSs per every retrograde P wave. And that's, you know, just saying that not every AV node is even going to be able to conduct retrograde. Um, and so that is a great way to determine if this is going to be ventricular tachycardia versus an SVT with aberrancy. And so what is our diagnosis based on the evidence that we just showed? We've got ventricular tachycardia. And then you can even sub-specialize or sub, um, you know, make sure that you get more specific with this rhythm and you can call this a monomorphic ventricular tachycardia. That means that our QRSs are staying the same in their morphology every single time, which tells me that there is a single focus within the ventricle that is likely causing this ventricular tachycardia. So if you have any questions about VTAC, throw them in the comments. I hope this helped. Have a great day.